Father Benedict Groeschel um, had an interview with the National Catholic Register. And during that interview, he was asked about some of the priests that were accused of sexually molesting young boys. And instead of blaming the priests for some of these uh, perverse actions, he decided to uh, blame the victims. He said the following, people have this picture in their minds of a person planning to, a psychopath, but that's not the case. Suppose you have a man having a nervous breakdown and a youngster comes after him. A lot of the cases, the youngster, 14, 16, 18, is the seducer. Wow. Is there a possibility that Todd Aiken paid him to say this crazy thing so we'd stop talking about Aiken? I can't imagine anyone saying anything more offensive than mm -hmm. that. To blame these young boys who were molested, who had their yeah. lives destroyed in many cases because of, because of these priests. I mean, it, to know that you as a leader within a religion are not apologetic about some of the horrible, horrible things that occurred, it just makes me sick to my stomach. Yeah. How do you defend comments like that? Well, I'm not going to, but right. it, yeah, it's crazy to say that they're personally responsible for the worst experience in their entire life. That goes, I think, a couple of steps beyond just saying like, oh, you know, someone who was, uh, who was raped was asking for it by dressing a certain way or walking in a certain area. Like some of these, some of these kids, and they're not 14, 16, 18, some of them are much younger than yes. that. So don't try to downplay it by saying they're 18. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about 10-year-olds and 7-year-olds. Um, we're, we're molested multiple times over periods. And then not only that, not only did that happen, but they, they got no justice when the people who did it were simply taken to a different area or something like that, right. or maybe not even taken to a different area. Can I also say that, it, first of all, let me note this. He is a professor of pastoral psychology at St. Joseph's Seminary. The reason why I bring that up is because if you are on the record being so unapologetic and if you're on the record making excuses for what these priests have done and you are a professor that some of these priests look up to mm -hmm. what kind of message are you sending them like if you do this it's acceptable it's okay it's because yeah. you were seduced it's the victim's fault it's not your fault it's because you were going through some sort of emotional breakdown and this you know demon came into your life and seduced you how unbelievable yeah. is that I can't believe that this man is actually teaching in the United States, and it's acceptable for him to say these things. There, it's incredible. There are a lot of crazy people. Now, he also talked about how these relationships, or, uh, yeah, the relationships were not homosexual in nature. Uh -huh. He says that they were heterosexual in nature. He says the following, if you go back 10 or 15 years ago with different sexual difficulties, except for rape or violence, it was very rarely brought as a civil crime. Nobody thought of it that way, and I'm inclined to think on a priest's first offense, they should not go to jail because their intention was not committing a crime. That may be crazier than the previous statement, actually. First of all, calling them different sexual difficulties, except for rape, rape or violence, which is exactly what we're talking exactly. about here, rape and violence. violence. Uh, to say that they should get, you know, your, your first time, you're just, boys will be boys. Go, you can go free. No, that, that's insane. Um, and then to think that, oh, God, it was, it was just better back in the good old days when you could rape someone and get away with it. Those were good times. It's unbelievable to me. Not to mention the fact that the, the, the weird mental gymnastics that go into saying the relationships are heterosexual in nature and that historically sexual relationships between men and boys have not been thought of as crimes. They're heterosexual in nature, but we're talking about sexual relationships. He might want to look into the definitions of that. Um, he, he just says so many crazy things. He says that the, the boys might be looking for father figures. They might be drawn to priests to fill an emotional hole in their lives. Yeah, that's what priests are there for, emotional, psychological support, not to be sexually molested. I feel like we're trying to talk sense into someone who is so firm in his beliefs that he is afraid of any type of criticism, right? Maybe. He doesn't want anyone to look down on his religion and his beliefs because of something that occurred, so he's being very dismissive of things that have occurred yeah. as opposed to confronting it. And I understand it. It's difficult when there's something that you love and you realize that that thing that you love has elements of it that are pure evil. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to be confronted with that. But I think it makes you a stronger person and it shows you your true character when you're able to step back and say, you know what, I believe in this religion and there's good in this religion. However, there is a tremendous amount of evil in this religion and we need to find a way to reform it. We yeah. need to find a way to change it. That's what you need to do.